Hello everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and my craft table. Today I'm going to be continuing my Cricut Summer Series and I'm going to make some canvas bags with infusible ink and one of them is going to, it's going to be so cute, it's going to say Summer Survival Kit. Um, I thought that my daughter would enjoy that just to be able to put, you know, things that she likes to carry around with her in the summer. And then I'm going to make another one, and this one is going to be a hiking themed bag, and this will be more for myself just to throw in my hiking backpack um, and just keep things handy, mostly like um, a little bit of lotion and sunscreen and chopstick and that kind of stuff. So the materials that I'm going to use today are the canvas bags, and I just got these off of Amazon, and I believe they're like seven and a half or eight inches wide and about four inches tall. So we'll measure those momentarily. I am going to use infusible ink. Um, I'm going to use this. This one's the uh, Rainbow Mermaid pattern, but I'm going to be using this striped one here. And it looks like this. This is just a really nice stripey design. So I'm going to be using this for the summer survival kit thought that would be pretty nice and then I'm going to be using this one is just called rainbow and it's kind of hard to see but it starts over here with like a pink purple and it goes all the way down into like an orange so that one will look like this and I have a nice size um, you know length left to go over here and I'm just gonna pick up as much of the rainbow as possible and that will be for the one that is hiking. Okay, so the other materials that you need for a project like this are, you're gonna need a cutting mat, and due to the size of these, you can tell that I can actually just cut these out with my Joy um, instead of my Maker, but you could do this on any of the machines. I'm gonna go ahead and use my Joy today, so I need that mat, a brayer, tweezers, weeding tool, scissors, a um, measuring tape, a lint roller, and uh, I always have my true control knife here on my table. You don't necessarily need that. It's just there because it's a habit for me. Now that we've talked about our supplies, let's go ahead and hop into design space and see the, the project designs. Here in design space, I've pulled up the two designs that I want to use on my project. So I found both of these under projects here in Design Space, and I just pulled both of them into the same canvas so that I can just do one particular project at one time. The Summer Survival Kit, that was um, a really sweet canvas bag. It, it was just so cute. I saw it and I thought, oh, that would be great for my daughter. And I am not going to change this at all. Um, probably the most I'm going to change it is to change the color. I'm just going to leave that exactly the way it is. I love it. I'm not going to leave it. I'm just not going to even touch it. I'm just going to leave it alone. I am going to come over here and I'm going to double click on attach and I'm going to say summer survival kit. I do like to kind of rename things, especially if I'm dealing with a lot of layers. Now, as far as the take a hike t-shirt, this has two layers. So this particular graphic I saw and I love it, but I don't necessarily like the moon. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make this bigger and I want to put a sun instead of a moon. I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's actually pretty easy. So if we, we can always hide the take a hike, and then here is the mountain night sky, and this is one uh, design as well. So let's do a little bit of some creative welding and slicing. And I'm the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go over to shapes and I'm going to grab a square and let's see, I am going to cover up 
that portion of the moons. And I'm actually going to zoom in pretty far. Do you see how the little box and the, the line of the graphic aren't quite matched up? So I'm just going to manipulate that. That looks great. So I'm going to select the mountain layer and the rectangle that uh, from my layers panel. And I am going to weld those together just like that. So no more moon. And then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to bring this in. I just want to cover up the moon part. There we go. Double check. Looks like the uh, spacing is good. So that weld, re notice over by the layers panel that it moved that original um, hiking mountain part. It moved it up out of the group. And we'll move that back in here in a minute. But I'm going to select both of those layers and I'm going to say weld. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave that out for a minute and I'm gonna zoom out just a bit. And then I want to go to images and I'm going to search for sun. And I want something that is fairly easy to weed. So probably, probably something like this particular one here. Let's go ahead and put this into the canvas. And it's definitely pretty big there. I'm going to resize it down. All right. And okay, let's change. Let's change this to like blue just for giggles. And then my sun is yellow. Okay. And I think that sun is pretty good. I'm going to zoom out and see if I like I definitely think that sun is a good size. So I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to grab the sun and I'm going to grab the blue layer, this well result, and um, I'm going to click slice. And when I do that, I have several things that are going to happen. I can move out this tiny little piece that needs to go away. I'm going to move out this particular part of the sun and then this particular part of the sun. And now I have, instead of a moon, I have a sun in my hiking picture. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to get rid of those. And I'm going to move in my layers panel. I'm going to come over here to that slice result there. And I'm just going to move that down back into that take a hike grouping. So it looks like this. I want to make sure that both of these are centered horizontally. So I selected both of them. I went to a line and I'm going to do center horizontally. And because they're grouped, I can grab the whole thing and resize it down. Okay, I think that looks good. I'm going to let that be the way it is. So the next thing that I'm going to do is very quickly, I'm going to double check the measurements of my canvas bags. And the canvas bags are approximately 8 by at least the portion that I can put something on so eight by four and then if you want to see what they're going to look like let's grab a rectangle and let's turn that let's see let's going to turn that into eight wide and four tall close the uh, sizing change it to like a I don't know like a little grayish color maybe Okay, so they're kind of like that a little bit. Something I learned this week in Design Space is I have the Summer Survival Kit and it's in the bottom of my layers panel, just hanging out. It's, sometimes it might be here. 
And then the square is the last thing that we added to our canvas, so it's at the top. If I take the summer and I move it to the top of the layers panel, then what will happen is when I move this over here, it's already on top of everything. So this layers panel is literally, these are kind of like the order in which things are stacked. Okay, and then if, if I did the take a hike, see how the take a hike goes behind? So just something that I learned this week in Design Space is however these are situated top to bottom, that is literally how they are layered stacked. I do think that I am going to bring the summer down just a little bit in size. I don't think it needs to be super ginormous like that. Okay, so that looks good to me. I like that size. So it turns out to be a five by three and a half. Okay. And then the take a hike, I'm going to move the take a hike. Okay. So take a hike and I'm going to move it above the square in the layers panel like that. And then I'm going to pull this over and it's already on top. Okay. Several ways you can do that. You could also right click. You could go to the Arrange panel. So there's lots of ways that you could do that. The other thing that we're going to do before we go to the Make screen is make sure everything's attached. But I want to double check the size, and this is definitely way too tall. So I'm going to definitely size that down. And I think that that looks good. Okay. So let's move this back over and we can go ahead and make the summer blue that's fine i'm going to go ahead and hide the rectangle we don't need it anymore so here's our summer it's perfectly sized and if you'll notice over here in the layers panel at the bottom it says detach which means all of this is attached the way you see it it will cut exactly like that you also know that by this little paperclip icon. For the take a hike, I actually need to attach all of that. So I'm going to uh, open the grouping menu here and I'm going to select both layers and then I'm going to do attach. And it doesn't matter that the color has changed. Um, that'll be fine. And then this is now all attached and you can see how it turned to a paperclip. And I'm just going to rename that Take a Hike. Okay. And that really is just for my own reference. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do Save As. And I want to put it under Bags. And I'm going to do Summer Canvas Bags. Okay, I'm just going to name it like that, put it in the folder I want, and hit save. And now I'm ready to go check out the Make screen. So again, I'm doing this on the Joy, so up here in the top right corner, you can see I have the Joy selected. You could do this on any cutting machine. I'm going to click on Make. So here is the Take a Hike, and you can see that it really doesn't take up very much space at all. And then I do need to mirror that because this is infusible ink. It needs to be mirrored just like iron on vinyl. I'm going to go to the second mat and take a look at that. That needs to be mirrored as well. And you can see that this one doesn't take up a lot of room either. So what I like to do in a case like this is I like to move everything to one mat. So I'm going to click on these three little dots right here and then select move object. I'll go ahead and select the first mat, hit confirm. And then I will need to bring one of them down. So I'm just going to put the take a hike at the very bottom, the summer at the very top. That way they're completely far enough away from each other that, they're, that their infusible inks will not overlap. 
everything will cut out at one time and I think it looks great. So this is mirrored. I'm going to hit continue. Okay, so I have infusible ink transfer sheets bookmarked in my favorites. So that's what all this is. If you don't, you can go ahead and click browse all materials and you can either type infusible ink in the little search box or you can scroll down through the materials. So I'm gonna go ahead and select infusible ink it's going to give me a warning to make sure that the mirror is turned on and that the material is ink side up on the mat. And I'm always using more pressure when I do infusible ink, so I'll change that. And I do have the fine point blade loaded. So the next thing to do is to get both of these on our mat. And then I will load it into the machine. It will measure make sure I have all the material the way it needs to be, and then it'll prompt me to click go, which I will do, and it will cut out. Before I actually go ahead and cut this out, I did want to show you one thing, because when you are doing directional oriented designs and your infusible ink or vinyl or whatever you're using is also, quote, directional, you do need to be a little mindful. So what I mean by that is that, okay, so my summer survival kit canvas bag is gonna be orientated this way. And so I have this stripes, I made sure that I cut it so that the stripes would be vertical, just like the bars of the design. And it is going in this direction, okay? So that is there. And then the hike, icon or the design at the bottom okay it's going to be this way and the what i noticed is that the gradient so this is like going from dark to light and then like this is kind of like sunny up here so i decided to go from dark to light from top to bottom so that the words will be down here and the sun area will be up here where it is kind of like that golden yellow and it looks like a sunrise. Just something to think about when you're putting your designs on the mat and on your materials. I'm gonna okay. go ahead and get this cut out and then I will see you in just a moment. All right, we got everything cut out. So now we are going to weave the designs and get them on to our canvas bags. So I am going to just pull these off of the mat like that. And let me replace my protective sheet here. Okay, and I'm gonna set that aside and here we go. So let's see. When you, these look great, by the way. When you are working with infusible ink, you definitely want your hands clean and dry, free of oil, perfume, lotion, etc. But what you want to do is you'll hear cracking sometimes, and sometimes you won't. Kind of depends on the design, but basically kind of get it um, cracked and separated from all of its little parts. So you can hear this one. Okay, this will help with the weaving. So I'm going to start with this one here. And I am going to have to remember to leave, I'm going to have to remember to leave the letters. And I notice that the K is super delicate. So is the A and the T. So hopefully these will stay the way they are supposed to. Okay, so then we've got our sunrise pieces and we're going to, I'm just gonna grab a section, get that started. And I'm just going to start pulling off the infusible ink. Okay. And I'll be getting rid of all of these other pieces.
Okay, this one looks great. Summer Survival Kit. And you can see how with the infusible ink, these little these little tittles and the inner of the A, they just weed so nicely and it's easy to keep those. Kind of like when we do iron on, it, it's a lot easier to do those. I know that, at least for me, adhesive vinyl, it tends to come up quite a bit and I lose those pieces. So over here on this design, there's a couple things I noticed. Number one, I've kind of got like a little fuzzy section and I'm just gonna cut that off because I don't want that infusible ink. And then in these particular lines right here for the A, the K, and the T, it's, they're there, but it's like their ink came up with part of the, the stuff I was weeding out. So I'm gonna try something. I'm going to, um, if I were to press this like that, there is no ink right here or here or here or here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my infusible ink markers and I am going to just see if I can very lightly just kind of stipple a little bit of ink onto those little spots and see if I can recover that design because I would really hate to have to recut this because then I would have to use a different com color completely and I'm not sure I want to do that. So here are my infusible ink markers and I'm gonna find well, that's red, red. I don't know that I need red, red. This is a lot of markers. Um, let's see. I'm going to, this is paprika and this is rose. Here's dusty rose. Maybe, maybe I'll do dusty rose. Okay. So another tip is uh, I got this canvas bag at Hobby Lobby and I had made my geometry mug. It looks like this. I ironically had it out. This is not, a, you know, not planned. But the design that I pulled off for that mug, it came off in one really nice piece. Like it was just gorgeous. So I used it to press onto this canvas bag and then this is what I use to hold all of my infusible ink markers. And that way I know that these are specialty markers and my family knows, no, nobody bothers with them. It's just a really easy way to keep those separated from everything else. And I find that it works really, really well. Okay, so let's see if I can kind of recover this a little bit and I'm basically just dotting on top of that papery section of the letter and I'm I'm really hardly even touching the paper and it's it's really taking that ink really well so I just want to make sure that those lines have a fair shot at being able to be seen once we press. And I'm just, like I said, I'm just using a stippling, just barely, barely, barely touching. And that way I won't have parts of my word missing because it's a gradient um, image, it's to me, it's not a big deal if it's a little bit different in color from the infusible ink sheet. I'm okay with that. This is just going in my hiking bag anyway. Okay, so we got those put back in there. All right, so now what we're gonna do is gonna grab my lint roller. So I'm right-handed. I tend to hold things with my left hand and go to the right with the zippers. So 
There's one. And here is two. I want to press both of these at the same time. So normally with, with iron on vinyl, um, we press this, but what I notice, and I'm actually not going to pull this one up because of the, that ink right there. But, um, if you press your item and you don't let it cool before you put the infusible ink sheet down, then you do run the risk of it immediately transferring. And I should have pressed this before, but I did not. So let me grab my easy press mat. I don't want to pull that one up simply because that the ink from the marker, I don't want to disturb that. But this one, I will press this one for just a few minutes or just a few seconds. Okay, and I'm gonna let that cool for just a moment because the minute I put the minute I put that ink down on here, it will absolutely start transferring. Okay. It is fairly cool. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this here. I'm gonna do the same thing. I want the center line in the center here. And I think. I think that's good right there. Okay, so I need to not let that come up. All right, so I'm going to put this here and this here. I do need to grab some butcher paper and we're going to put some on the inside and we're going to put some on top. I'm going to just slide this butcher paper in and this will just help prevent against any bleed through. Same thing with this one. The sheet that I put on top, it will definitely go in the bin today and then I will be able to use my super ginormous roll that I purchased from Amazon. I'm very excited. I finally can open that up and, and put it to good use. Okay, so I'm going to put these this way. And the reason why is so I can hopefully, well, I want to try and avoid the zipper area and have the press here as much as possible. Okay. And so these are ready to go. I'm going to put this fisher paper down like this. So we got our mat. We have some cardboard to protect the mat. We have butcher paper on the inside of each to protect against bleed through. Everything is good. We're going to cover that with the butcher paper. And now we're going to do, actually, I don't need to do, well, I'm going to leave that. Okay. So then when I put this down, just like that, don't move it. And I'm going to give it a little bit of firm pressure and I'm going to hit my button. So I'm doing 400 degrees and I'm going to do 75 seconds. All right. So I'm going to just move this to the side and then I'm going to I'm going to slide this off like that. That mat holds in a lot of heat. And then I'm going to slide each one of these onto the glass mat. Okay. So I'm going to check. I'm going to hold down one side. Actually, that's kind of warm. Let's see. I'll hold, I'll hold it down like that. And I'm just gonna lift and make sure 
perfect. This was a really good transfer. It's got the gradient. You can, there's no more ink on this sheet. These little tiny pieces can come off of here. Okay, this was a perfect transfer. I think my daughter will be very pleased with this. So this is fantastic. Great job. Okay, moment of truth of this one. This is the only one I'm a little nervous about because of the marker. Actually, that doesn't look too bad. So I don't think it's wise to repress that. This sun area right here, sorry, it's off camera. This sun area here is a little more um, vibrant and the A is perfect. I'm not really gonna worry about those spots right there that I'm just not gonna worry about. Oh, let's see, let's take a look at both of these. We've got Take a Hike for Mom and Summer Survival Kit for Daughter. And these turned out so good. I'm very, very pleased with this project. I hope that you found this video was informative, inspiring, and getting your creative juices going. Um, make sure that you enjoy some of the summer sun and activities with your friends and family. And until I see you in the next video, as always, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.